countless mysteries surround the moon, which is considered the only natural satellite of the Earth. Many people wonder if life would be possible on the moon. Since the moon consists of 40% oxygen, we would have at least something to breathe. The first manned moon landing took place on July 20, 1969, by Apollo 11. At that time, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on our Earth satellite. If you like our videos, feel free to support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and get ready for many more fascinating videos in the future. U-22 rover brings new discoveries to light. Not long ago, Chinese scientists published an analysis of a strange lunar substance brought to light by the Chinese National Space Administration's U-22 rover. In July 2019, a team member had made this discovery on the eighth lunar day of the rover mission, which is part of China's Chang'e 4 mission to explore the far side of the moon. This lunar far side is also known as the dark side of the moon. A report from Our Space, a Chinese science outreach publication, revealed the discovery on August 17th. They described the substance with the word Jiao Zhuang Wu, which can be translated as gel-like. This description generated a lot of interest among lunar scientists and caused a lot of speculations. Substance is not gelatinous. However, as scientists had already expected, the substance is made of rock. In their article in the peer-reviewed journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters, or EPSL, colleagues analyzed data from U-22's panoramic and hazard avoidance cameras, as well as from the rover's VNIS instrument. They used a spectral unmixing technique to break down the measured spectra from the VNIS. They also wanted to study the composition and abundance of the material. The authors of the Chinese Science Outreach publication described the material as a dark green and a glittery molten breccia. It has a size of about 21 by 6 inches. Molten breccias are formed when different rocks fuse together and harden. These features indicate the possible presence of glass, which is usually formed during impact melting or the eruption of a volcano. What exactly is the material involved? Presumably, breccia was formed by impact-related welding, cementing, and agglutination of regolith. A breccia is a broken fragment, that is, a kind of boulder. The material resembles breccia samples returned from NASA's Apollo missions. Breccias resemble conglomerates in structure. In particular, similarities to Apollo samples labeled 15466 and 70019 were noted. This comparison was previously made by lunar scientist and author Clive Neal. Clive Neal is known for works such as New Views of the Moon. Sample 70019, collected by American astronaut Harrison Jack Schmidt, consists of dark, broken mineral fragments and shiny black glass. Schmidt remains to this day the last man to walk on the moon. However, the results are not definitive. Scientists note that the analysis is limited by some factors. For example, the lighting was not favorable during the VNIS spectrometry measurements. Exploration of completely unknown lunar regions. Dan Moriarty, NASA postdoctoral researcher, admitted that spectral unmixing was a major challenge because Chang'e 4 was engaged in exploring a completely unknown area of the moon. The Chang'e 4 spacecraft is China's second lunar lander and rover. We don't have any region samples that could give us information about the model parameters. For this reason, the current regolith composition results may not be precise enough, Moriarty said. However, the authors have done an excellent job documenting their assumptions so their results can be understood in the context of this extremely challenging problem. Consistency with previous records. Moriarty also said that their interpretation of the substance seems reasonable to him and is consistent with previous reports. 
It is an inspiration that we are discovering features on the far side of the moon that are similar to what the Apollo astronauts observed, Moriarty said. The environment was also measured. The authors hypothesize that the lunar regolith is composed of a mixture of several sources. Ejecta from the impact that caused the nearby Finson crater is thought to be the main source, with possible contributions from the Eagle crater. The Chang'e 4 spacecraft historically landed in the 112-mile-wide von Karman crater on the far side of the moon in January 2019. The impact crater was named in honor of the Hungarian physicist and aeronautical engineer Theodor von Karman. There is still much to discover on the moon. This is not the first time idiosyncratically colored materials have been discovered on the moon. During one of his expeditions, Apollo 17 astronaut Harrison Schmidt discovered orange-colored soil on the moon near the landing site. Geologists analyzed the findings and determined that the substance was probably volcanic in origin. In a recent discovery, researchers were able to identify water vapor in the atmosphere of exoplanet K2-18b. Chang'e 4 also has drawbacks. Compared to the Apollo mission, the Chinese lunar mission has one major drawback. Chang'e 4 is unmanned. In addition, the rover does not have a grappling arm with which it could make more detailed examinations of the materials. The subsequent Chinese mission called Chang'e 5, Chinese for Moon Goddess, also landed on the moon without astronauts. When will the next humans visit the moon? According to the current status, the next humans will set foot on the moon in 2024 at the earliest. That's when NASA plans to send astronauts to the moon's south pole, which is particularly rich in frozen water. NASA is also targeting a first lunar orbit in 2022 with the new Orion spacecraft. The entrepreneur Elon Musk wants to fly his Starship spacecraft to the moon for the first time in 2023. Japanese billionaire Yusaka Maezawa has already booked tickets for himself and a group of six to eight invited artists. An Israeli lunar landing has already crashed in 2019 during its approach to the moon. And although that space venture went wrong, more missions are already being planned. What preparations are actually behind a trip to the moon? There have been a total of 121 known attempts to fly to the moon. Of these, 55 resulted in false starts in various ways. There have been various problems ranging from explosions during launch to unplanned crashes on the Earth's satellite. However, it may well be that some failed flights were not officially recorded at all. Of course, there are also many preparations behind the visit to the moon. But what is the challenge of flying to the moon? First of all, getting there can only be done in a roundabout way. To get to the moon, space travelers must cover a distance of 238,855 miles. Secondly, the radiation can be very stressful. Symptoms of space radiation include acute discomfort such as nausea, vomiting, and central nervous system disorders. Some of these ailments do not become noticeable until years after radiation. Of course, space travelers also suffer from a higher risk of cancer, vision problems, as well as heart disease. Thirdly, the moon is extremely dusty. We have this dust on our planet as well, but unfortunately this lunar dust cannot be easily removed by wind or rain. The fine particles are as sharp as glass and are deposited not only on spacesuits and equipment, but also in the lungs of the space travelers. This is why space travelers have complained of so-called lunar hay fever up till now. If this lunar dust is inhaled over a long period of time, it is capable of destroying lung and brain cells. The exact consequences have yet to be fully clarified. What you don't need to survive in space. On top of all of this is the fact that the moon is almost 1,000 times further away from Earth than the ISS. If you want to survive there, you'll absolutely need not only water and air treatment systems, but also equipment to generate electricity. To satisfy your hunger, 
you'll also need food that grows continuously. In 2016, Dutch researchers managed to grow plants on simulated lunar and Martian soil. But since there is no life on the moon, the regolith also has no organic components and thus hardly any nutrients. One option would be for astronauts to provide these organic components themselves through their feces or food waste. Another solution would be a kind of mini greenhouse. In it, plants could then grow in a calcareous mineral mass, which would be augmented by a nutrient solution. This vegetation system has already been able to provide the ISS crew with fresh lettuce on many occasions. Would you be interested in visiting the moon one day? What makes life on another planet so exciting for you? We look forward to hearing your opinion in the comments.